in this lesson, I'm going to explain Bitcoin, what it is, and how it works. A quick disclaimer though, it is not necessary to fully understand all of the technical details of how Bitcoin works to be able to use it. In the same way that you probably do not understand exactly how your smartphone works, but that of course doesn't prevent you from being able to successfully use it. So, at its simplest, Bitcoin is the world's best and most secure form of digital money. Bitcoin is also a digital currency designed to work as a medium of exchange between two or more parties. Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency and it is the premier cryptocurrency. A cryptocurrency, by the way, is a currency based on cryptography, which is the art of writing or solving codes. Or if you want to think of it this way, basically magic internet money. Bitcoin was created in 2008 in response to the global financial crisis as some kind of a form of sound money for hard times. The creator of Bitcoin was a man woman, or potentially group of people known as Satoshi Nakamoto, who until this day has remained anonymous. In 2008, Satoshi published a white paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. This is a very important document for the crypto community as a whole and really laid out the vision and also the technical specifications for Bitcoin to come into existence. Bitcoin at its core is money. But for you, your primary interest will probably be in Bitcoin as a speculative investment. And while Bitcoin is indeed a fantastic investment opportunity, which has without a doubt return spectacular results for many investors over the years, this is far from the real power of Bitcoin. It is the fundamentals driving the Bitcoin network that create so much value for Bitcoin. And the fundamentals for Bitcoin are indeed strong. Bitcoin enables you to be your own bank. In fact, Bitcoin has been described as having a Swiss bank in your pocket, which is definitely powerful stuff. You control the only keys to your funds. You are in complete control of your Bitcoin and you can access your funds 24 seven and send them to any other Bitcoin user without needing to ask permission of your bank or of anyone else for that matter. But as they say, with great power comes great responsibility. You must be very careful with your keys, which is like your secret Bitcoin password. We're going to talk more on that in a later video. Now, here are some of the features which make Bitcoin just so amazing. Bitcoin is permissionless. Bitcoin removes the middleman from your monetary life, the bank. You do not have to ask permission to send Bitcoin. You can send Bitcoin to anyone, anywhere, at any time. It is truly global. It is truly the money of the internet. Now, the use cases for this are immense, as many people in the developing regions of the world, for example, lack access to bank accounts or they lack government issued IDs required to even start a bank account in the first place. And you know what? Bitcoin doesn't ask for any of that stuff. All that is required is an internet connection. Bitcoin is censorship resistant. International sanctions, frozen bank accounts, 
being cut out of the financial system, politically sensitive money transfers. Those are some extreme cases, but you know what? Bitcoin doesn't care about any of that stuff. Bitcoin won't stop you from sending money from point A to point B. It can't. And that is the beauty of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is decentralized. There is no governing body. There is no Bitcoin corporation. It is open source code maintained by the open source developer community and run by a globally distributed network of high powered computers which process transactions and keep all of the records in the network. The decentralized nature of the Bitcoin ledger, or perhaps you may like to think of it as an accounting book, means that we no longer need to trust third parties like banks in order to keep our money safe. We can keep our own money and be in charge of our own monetary lives. The decentralized nature of Bitcoin also means that there is no single point of failure. And thus, the network is always running, even if one computer or thousands of computers go offline, there will still be plenty to maintain the network. There is no centralized point of failure. Bitcoin is also transparent. Every Bitcoin address, you can think of it like a bank account, is visible to every other Bitcoin user in the network. And also every transaction is visible to every other Bitcoin user in the network. But even though it is possible to see all of this information, addresses are not actually linked to your name, but instead to an alpha numeric code that serves as your public address. Again, we'll discuss more on that later when we get into the wallet section. The technology underpinning Bitcoin is called blockchain. The blockchain is simply a distributed ledger where each block contains a timestamp and a link to the previous block, forming a digital chain of blocks of timestamped data. Now, in Bitcoin, this serves as an incorruptible digital ledger of economic transactions. Since once a block has been completed, it cannot be rewritten. The results of that block are final. But this blockchain technology, it is not limited just to finance and can be implemented in a wide array of cases like supply chains, personal identification, and contracts like we might find on Ethereum. Since Bitcoin lacks a lot of additional functionality and is really primarily focused on the transfer of monetary value from person A to person B, we need more blockchains to bring in that extra functionality. Any system that requires transparency, traceability, and security is an ideal use of blockchain technology. Every 10 minutes in Bitcoin, a new block is issued. If the Bitcoin blockchain is, if we can imagine it like a large digital accounting book, then one block would be synonymous with one page of that book recording who sent money to who in the last 10 minutes. This record keeping is carried out by the miners people and companies running high powered computers. Now these people get a reward for their work of making a block in the form of a small transaction fee that you must pay when you send Bitcoin. And also they get a set reward of Bitcoin, which is programmed into the Bitcoin code and is rewarded to whichever miner is able to solve the algorithmic problem first. This earns them the right to sign the block or the ledger page as completed and thus allows the next block to begin, where the competition to be the miner who gets to collect the fees and to collect the block reward begins all over again. This has been happening every 10 minutes for more than a decade. 
By the way, cheating with Bitcoin is impossible due to the nature of the distributed ledger. So if one was, for example, to try and spend a Bitcoin twice or double spend Bitcoin, then the other miners would, or bookkeepers if you like to think of them, they would simply disagree with that transaction and it would not be processed. Every transaction in Bitcoin can be verified. Bitcoin is also highly, highly secure and the blockchain itself cannot be hacked. Anyone who gets their Bitcoin hacked has had bad security practices and kept their private keys somewhere where hackers could easily exploit it and find it. As long as you control your private keys, no one can access your Bitcoin. So please be very careful with where you store this information. The private keys are basically your password, which allows you to send and to claim ownership of your Bitcoin. It is essential to keep these keys private and secure. Again, I will cover this topic in more depth in the wallet section. And from an investment fundamentals perspective, Bitcoin is a deflationary asset with a maximum supply of 21 million Bitcoin that will ever, ever exist. Currently, a little more than 18 million Bitcoin exists and the last 3 million Bitcoin are going to take another 100 years to be mined. Now, a key thing to understand as well is that Bitcoin is highly divisible, having eight decimal points. So one single unit of Bitcoin is called a Satoshi. One Bitcoin is comprised of a hundred million Satoshis. The total supply of Satoshis, or the smallest unit of Bitcoin, is 2.1 quadrillion, which underlines how incredibly divisible it is. The key thing to understand, too, is that you do not need to buy one whole Bitcoin. You can buy just a small little piece of Bitcoin. So, for example, you can buy 0 0.01 Bitcoin, also known as one million Satoshis. You just do that every week. Easy. Eventually, you'll get a whole piece of Bitcoin. Now, this is just the basis of Bitcoin. In future lessons, you'll learn more about mining and more about keys. And I understand this is quite a lot of information for you to take in. That is why I decided to provide you with some helpful questions, which you can find in the description of this video to check yourself and to see how much knowledge you have gained. So if you can answer all of the questions, then you are ready to move on. If not, you might want to watch this lesson again.